Pastor Ben here. Uh, the book of Joel, it is one of the shorter of the minor prophets, uh, and we don't know a lot about the author himself. Uh, there's even some question as to when the book would have been uh, written, the, the people that Joel would have been talking to in, in the timeline. Uh, but we do know, as we have studied out uh, the message that uh, God gave to Joel, that he is very concerned about describing the day of the Lord and what it means to be on either side of that, either in God's judgment and wrath or uh, in the uh, redemptive and rest restored relationship with God. And we see the description of uh, the the bad side of that coin of, of being far from God, described first as a locust horde that destroys everything and a, uh, an all-consuming fire, uh, an army that is uh, so powerful that uh, and and so perfect that it just completely wipes out everything, right? It's utter destruction. But then on the other side, we see that those who will repent, who will call on the name of the Lord, uh, that he will provide everything uh, and will, will completely satisfy all needs, um, and that he will restore anything that has been um, destroyed and, and, and taken away. Uh, those things will be found in the provision of the Lord. Uh, and in one of the, the more bright places in this book, uh, we see this statement in chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So although Joel is, is writing to the people of God at the time, the nation of Israel, uh, perhaps just the southern kingdom of Judah or the entire nation. Uh, we know that uh, the people of God goes beyond just the lineage of the Israelites and of the message inside of Joel of repenting and returning to the Lord um, and, and of seeing that God is, is behind all things, uh, that there is nothing that happens outside of his power, uh, reminds us then that we too, uh, if we have called upon the name of the Lord and are saved, um, then we are a part of God's people. And so in 1 Peter 2, uh, we see that reminder um, played out in this way. Uh, starting in verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, God's own possession. Uh, these, these themes, a chosen race, uh, the, right, the people of God, uh, a royal priesthood, we saw in the in the book of Joel that uh, the priests weren't even able to survive because there were no offerings, right? There was no provision of um, sacrifice available to them. A holy nation, right? A, a people that are set apart from the people around them. And then a people for his own possession. Uh, in, in the latter half of Joel, uh, we see uh, God calling to his people. And we also see that Joel is describing his people uh, as, as, as owned by God, related to God in his family, not just a, a random people, but a, a called people. Uh, so this description is also of us who are believers today. And it's important to be reminded that uh, we are a chosen race. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people called out for God's possession. And why? It says, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That darkness, uh, uh, whether although we may not have the difficulties that are described in Joel with a locust swarm, uh, we know the darkness that we have faced in our own lives. And the poetic way that it's described in Joel is, is an utter and complete destruction. Um, in, in chapter 1, he says to, to weep as though you are a, a virgin who's lost their bridegroom, right? Widowed before they've even been married. Um, and to to go from that into the marvelous light that's described later in Joel, the restored kingdom, the, the um, complete satisfaction in God and in what he gives to us. 
right? That's the hope that we look forward to, and as we know, the day of the Lord uh, being Jesus' return, as he's promised uh, that he will come back. As we continue reading in 1 Peter, verse 10 says, Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Again, hearkening back to that statement of all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it is only in salvation through Christ that we are able to be called God's people. And so uh, Peter gives this uh then uh, advice of how to live about life as this called people. Verse 11 says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So this being set apart, uh, regardless of the circumstances, again, thinking about um, whatever the darkness is that we're facing because of this broken and fallen world, not letting those things cause us to live in a way that doesn't represent uh, who we are in Christ. Uh, And so being able to abstain from the passions of the flesh, right? It's a constant fight in our sin battle. Uh, but knowing that as we struggle through our sin, uh, it is God working in us, it's the Holy Spirit convicting us, um, and it's uh, a glorious struggle with a result that will then show just the mighty power of God to those who are far from God, as well as a reminder to those who are near to God. Uh, this is not, the Christian life is not just an easy walk. It's not just a simple, yes, I will follow you, God, but knowing that there's there's bumpy roads on the path. But as long as we continue to stick to to cling close to God and to, to stick to what he's asked us to do, um, that is where we will be able to then show this good conduct that will see the good deeds, not because of our goodness, but because of God, and that uh, people will glorify God because of what he's done in our lives. That day of visitation, again, is is the the day of the Lord, right? The return of Christ, where all knees will bow, every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord. Uh, We know that 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 day is great and, and terrible and amazing, and it should motivate us to Uh, want to continue to share the gospel hope that we have so that people don't face the judgment. They don't end up on the dark side as uh, we saw in the book of Joel and the the, just the awful things uh, that come to that, but that they will be repent and they will be restored and that they would uh, just see just how gracious and merciful and loving God is. Um, So as, as we consider, uh, what Joel reminds us of, uh, first, that whatever darkness we're facing, God is still out calling. God is still working in those circumstances. And second, whatever darkness another person may be facing, there's no darkness that's too dark that God can't reach into it and and save someone out of that. Um, he is asking for repentance. He is calling. Uh, and so it's our job to encourage and to uh, respond to that calling in order that the day of the Lord might not be uh, one of terrifying anguish, but one of glorious redemption. <laughs>